Okay, let's move on because uh, a lot of questions in the audience. Uh, Brian, you've anticipated pretty much the next one. <laughs> it's from uh, Susie Wakefield. Um, hello. Recently on Insiders, Malcolm Roberts gave Barry Cassidy his business card and asked Barry to get back to him when he had proof and data that there is a human element in our increasing climate change. I was hoping the panel could perhaps guide um, Barry with some fact and just not opinion on the human element in climate change. I was going to start with Brian Cox, uh, the scientist on the panel, and uh, can you provide scientific data or evidence that might help Barry Cassidy convince Malcolm over here that <laughs> human-induced climate change is a reality? Well, yes, and I could sit here and read out figures until I'm blue in the face. I mean, it, well, actually, um, interestingly, the, it's getting more worrying if you look at the temperature measurements now. I mean, at 2015 and 2016 in particular have seen a, a, a quite shocking mm. acceleration in, in many of the measures, be it surface temperatures, ocean temperatures, etc. So, so I, the, the first few months I noticed of 2016 have, um, above the average, the pre-industrial mm. average, mm. have been pushing 1.5 degrees. Now, you can't read too much into individual years. You have to be careful because you see these graphs and they're spiky. But there's a, there's a clear rise. And it's, well, I, the, I, later, the latest I, data is actually suggesting that by... Uh, 2024, 1.5 degree increase um, is on the cards now, well, actually, uh, which puts it very close to the critical that, that's 2%. A, that, that, and that's a, a prediction of, of the models. But actually, in the first, the early months of 2016 have already shown that. So, so we don't know how 2016 is going to continue. But that, that is a worrying problem. Because? What would happen if we reach 2%? Oh, there are some um, sh shocking predictions, actually, that you see where, where places in the, in the Middle East, for example, that are already experiencing temperatures, sometimes in excess of 50 degrees, I think, this year, um, become essentially uninhabitable for certain periods of time. So it, it exacerbates you know, sea level rise, etc. So what it does, it exacerbates some of the problems we're seeing. We just spoke about refugee problems. Um, if you begin to get large shifts in climate very fast, then human populations have to respond. So how do you respond on very short timescales? One of the things you do is, is you move. So, so again, I emphasize it's the same answer as the answer to the last question, I think. This is now a clear global problem. Um, the absolute, absolute consensus is that, that human action is leading to an increase in average temperatures. Absolute consensus. It, 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 I can't. I, I know you may try to argue with that, but you can't. No, I'm not in my uh, way. So, 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 um, so, so, but therefore, um, but the, the key point is: Can we respond to it? Is it? Do we have the political institutions and the political will and the organisation globally to respond to this challenge? And that worries me immensely. I don't think we do at the moment. I'm going to go quickly to uh, Malcolm Roberts. We'll want to hear from all the panellists on this. Sure. But Sure. The longest uh, temperature record for, for temperatures on this planet is the Central England temperature record, which goes back to the mid 16, 1600s. And the first of the, oh, sorry, the, the latest in, 16th, in the 17th century, the latest warming cycle in the 17th century going into the 18th century was faster and greater than the latest warming which finished in 1995. And Justin Bieber wasn't flying his private jet around in the 1600s. That's the first thing. The second thing was we've had a pause in, in this so-called warming for now 21 years. Depends how you measure it, 21 years. And I'm absolutely stunned that someone who is inspired by Richard Feynman, a fantastic scientist who believes in empirical evidence is quoting a consensus. Can I just say, I, just, I brought the graph, right? I mean, can I just... <laughs> <laughs> um, OK, let me, let, me, let, me, let me just tell you where, where, the, where, the, where the pause is. It, the, the pause that's often quoted, the, there's, um, if you take this point here, which is about 1997, I think, and you ignore 2015, 2016, you can choose that point and you can draw a slightly straighter trend line on there. But that, that's a, a misunderstanding. The, the, the question is, does that rise? And also, secondly, I'd have got another graph, because I've heard it. Is it correlated with that, which is the graph that shows the um, CO2 emissions, uh, the CO2 in parts per million in the atmosphere? And you see that peak there? 
where it goes flying up. So the, the question essentially is, first of all, are those two things correlated? And secondly, do we understand the physical mechanisms? And we, we understood those since the 19th century. Brian, I mean, can I you can go back teach to the graph? I'll give you a lesson graph? if you want. <laughs> I can, give you a... can you go back to the middle of the graph there? Yeah. The, the... <clears throat> that graph. Yeah, the peak in the middle? Yep. What year is that? That's about 1941. Yeah, 1930s and 40s were warmer than the current decades. What you, where's that, well, no, what's the no, data source? Well, not exactly. No, no, the original <laughs> records are. <laughs> I don't the original know records are. Graphs. The original records are far warmer. But the other thing that tells me that graph has got something wrong with it is that 1998 was about the same as 2015-16. Okay, I'm just going to, just going to yeah. pause here. So you're but hearing, you're, so you're hearing. It was an El Nino year. Both were El Nino years. You're, and that's you're, the point you're, you're taking Malcolm, just, just one second. Oh, you're well. hearing the interpretation of a, a highly qualified scientist, um, and you're just saying, "I don't believe it." Is that right? I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying two things. I'm saying two things. I'm saying two things. First of all that the data has been corrupted, and we know that the 1930s what do you mean were warmer corrupted? than today. Yeah. Corrupted? What do you mean corrupted? Been manipulated. And, by and, who? Uh, by NASA. NASA? By the singer, yes. <laughs> the people hang on a second. Hang on a minute. No, no, see, this is quite no, serious. No, I'm going to just, just ask the audience, just hang on. We've actually yes. got to hear what's being said here. So it's all very well to laugh, but we want to hear what's being said. Steve Goddard, um, he, he has shown the NASA figures, and the, the graph was originally showing that 1930s were warmer than recent decades, and that is correct. And people have recognised that for many, many years. And in the recent years, they have be, they've been reversed so that the 1930s were reduced in temperature and the later periods were inflated in temperature. That's a fact. Now, the Bureau of Meteorology is exactly the same. And Greg Hunt squashed an investigation of the Bureau of Meteorology earlier this year. OK, all right, Greg Hunt. Can I just check one thing? <laughs> NASA. <laughs> now, NASA. Yes. The people that landed... Men on the moon. I don't. You, you, I, I, I should just ask. Actually, you you believe we landed men on the moon? But, see, uh, see, but, the, see the little trick there. No, it's the, questioning but, whether or not I believe that I'm a, I'm a uh, moon skeptic. Now, are you? No, I'm not. Oh right. Um, no, no. But I mean, I mean, it's a serious accusation. I mean, it is the, the idea, the idea that NASA and. Presumably, I, I should say to people, by the way, that the, the um, Australian Academy of Science have done a brilliant... You can never get any sense on, on programmes like this. They're adversarial and things. But this, the science of climate change, the, um, the uh, Australian Academy of Sciences report is superb. I, I brought it because I'm going to come and give it to you in a minute so you can have a read. <laughs> but th that's very good if you want to see... The, but, the, but the point is that the, the accusation that, that NASA... Pretty all the, 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 the Australian, the, the, the Met Office in the UK, everybody is collaborating to manipulate global temperature data. Are you accusing me of saying they're collaborating? Well, they all, they've all manipulated it in the same way and accidentally got to the same answer. Is that NASA, what you're saying? Na NASA, NASA was led by James Hansen. What about the Met Office activist. in the UK then? Well, this could go around all night. Well, I know it could, could yes. Yeah, it could right. go around all night. Um, I want to hear from Greg. Greg Hunt's been accused though. of stopping an investigation into. These are all experts in their field and they advise us on what is real and what is what is not real. And, and as far as I'm concerned, the, 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 where politics comes into play is how to implement their advice. As far as I'm concerned, politics should be based on empirical evidence. All policy should be based on empirical evidence. I've heard consensus, which is not science. I've heard appeals to authority, which is not science. I've heard um, various You've illusions. Seen a, hang seen on, a graph. I've heard. I'm... Hang on. Hang on, hang on, Brian. You showed thing. me a graph of temperature. Yeah, but I could you show showed you. me a graph of temperature, but no one has ever explained cause and effect. What is important in science? Hang on, and, and, you're, and you're one no, of your inspired, it. Peter, one of your inspire, inspirers is Richard Feynman. Richard Feynman says it doesn't matter how beautiful, how emotional your theory. If the evidence does not suit, it is wrong. That's what Richard Feynman says. And what we need is, a, is not just empirical evidence. Can I have one we minute? need empirical... Hang on. Yeah, yeah. We, we need don't. empirical How? evidence that demonstrates and proves cause and okay. effect. Now, Greg oh. Hunt says he relies on advice. I have never, ever heard Greg Hunt say that he relies on data. Now, Brian, you asked for a minute and you, you wanted to, you wanted to, uh, well, I mean, to respond a, a, a to broad, what... A broader Martin point Robinson. about how you would do science and, and, and this issue in general. So it's a, obviously a sensible, as you said, a very important question to ask. What will our climate be like, which is essentially the probability of weather, what's it going to be like in 2050 and 2100, under different scenarios, 
given that we understand the physical mechanism for greenhouse warming, etc. I mean, you were right in one thing you said, which is that um, CO2 is essential for life. It is. The, the, the temperature on the surface of the Earth would be very low, below freezing, if it wasn't for the fact that we had a greenhouse effect. You see that on Venus as well. So we understand, we understand the physical mechanisms. But the point is, it's a legitimate question and a very important question to ask. What if we carry on emitting greenhouse gases at this rate, or an increased rate or a decreased rate, what do we think will be the impact on the climate in 50 years' time? We can only answer no, that so, question if we understand uh, now, it now. So, yes. So, so the, only, the way you do that is you make measurements now of temperatures, sea temperatures, sea levels, Arctic ice volume, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then you try and model the climate in order to make a prediction about the future. Now, that's the only way that you can make a prediction about the future. There is no other way. So you can check but, the models. Brian, and the models no, no, have already been proven wrong, hopelessly wrong. Well, no. They, 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 yes, they you have. You cross-check them into the past, for example. They do quite nicely. Um, you, they, they have a large uh, but actually shrinking error range on them. It's but increasing. the question is, if you don't do that, if you don't model, which is a central part of the scientific process, how do you go about answering the question, which, as you said, um, our young people here have a right to ask, which is, what will the world be like in 2050, in 2075, in 2100? If you don't model it, this is my question to you, if you don't model it, how can you go about trying to answer the question? The models that the IPCC uses are unvalidated and erroneous and have already been proven hopelessly wrong. And that's a fact. That, that right? wasn't hang my on, question. hang on. I that wasn't my question. Go. That's how, a, would, how would you that's go a, about answering the question? You answer the question by making projections based on models, providing the models are validated and have been proven to be accurate. And the models have already been proven to be inaccurate and the IPCC has, re has recognised that and admitted it. Now, what we need to do is look at the empirical data. And the empirical data says quite categorically that the levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere are a result of temperature changes. No, that, that, that's cause. flat out wrong. No, that's, it's not. That's, that's, that's correct. It is flat out I've incorrect. looked at the data that the Sorry, UN just hang on. Got, he listened it to you wrong. and now you have to listen to him. It is wrong. Uh, let me just, all right, I'll just give you one snapshot. So, so I took a snapshot of the, 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 the different bits of evidence for 2015. So global upper ocean heat content, highest on record in 2015. Global sea level, highest on record in 2015, 70 millimetres higher than that observed in 1993. Global surface temperature, highest on record. El Nino, uh, something like 10 to 40% contribution to that. And, uh, tropical slice loans, well above average overall. As you said, um, the, the, even the, the, the anecdotal data. Mm. I actually had, I had a wonderful, I, I, can't, I was going to comment a story <laughs> then, but I won't do because it'll take too long. But as you said, so, so, so the point is you, you go evidence, 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 Arctic continues to warm, sea ice extent low, uh, Arctic land surface temperature in 2015, 2.2 .2 degrees Fahrenheit above 1981 to 210 average. Bias. But the point is, the, the, the key point is that if you don't accept that the only way to try to formulate policy on what we do with emissions is to build models. That's the only way you can predict the future, otherwise you have tarot cards. That is Just before you come in, Malcolm, I'm going to interrupt because I want to hear from